Okay, thanks for watching. Okay, in this video, I will, I will be talking to you about my little bit of experience with uh, Bagua Zhang. Okay, I learned Bagua for a few um, months. It wasn't even a year. I, I was learning with a teacher, and the teacher actually was my my second Chinese teacher of the martial arts in China. This is so I'd been learning pre prior to that I'd been learning you know long fist wushu okay chung chuan and weapons and stuff with the other teacher and then this other teacher this other guy um, it was great he was a little older 50 something but um, I was learning with him and we trained in a park and he had a group of students actual like people that followed him of different ages in their 30s 20s 30s whatever ages they were 40s but he was teaching people and he was basically the Sifu, the Shifu, okay, the master, you know, to them he was. This, and you had to say that in respect to him, and that's what you'd call the teacher, the same way it's like Sensei in Japanese, whatever, you know, so um, Shifu, okay, Sifu, whatever it is. That's what I, we've always called uh, the Chinese martial arts teachers or in, in the schools I've been to and stuff. So, you know, the, he was, and he would wear, you know, the outfit and everything, and this guy was there, and he'd... <laughs> He had some muscle in his arms, I'll say that. He was fairly older, but you could see. And um, he'd been training his life. And I could see in this guy, that were, again, he was one of the old school ones. He was really, really, he was legit. He had speed, power, root, and fighting ability. You could see it. And he would show applications and stuff on people too, here and there. But it was all mainly about the Gong Fu and the self-training and the art. Now, if you don't know anything much about um, Bagua, I think it's called Eight Diagrams Boxing or Eight Diagram Palm. Zhang meaning palm, okay? Chuan, chuan meaning fist. Zhang is shou zhang, I think the palm of your hand, your shou in Mandarin Chinese. I do speak Mandarin Chinese, as I say. Not perfectly, but still, you know. Yeah, and, um, no, and that, yeah so basically that's what it was. And uh, as I say, yes, and no, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, <clears throat> this art is about fighting in a circle. You circle the opponent. There's a lot of twisting of the body, the upper body, and the, the waist, but the, the root of it, you're really rooted, your legs standing in a root. It's about like being rooted like a tree. And they have training methods where you actually walk around the tree or have to stand there facing a tree, then turn to face the other way and work these fighting movements. So you see it's a little bit different to arts like... Sing Yi, which goes straight forward in a straight line, and other arts like Wing Chun, which also works in a straight line. You see in Japanese arts like Aikido, which is also, again, a soft art, which utilizes uh, using the attacker's force against him, just like the sticky hands of Wing Chun and the, and the pushing hands of Taiji and Bagua. But in Aikido, they've got circular turning and stuff, uh, you know, stepping off the line of fire, but it's all about going straight in as well, so similar to Wing Chun. And uh, Aikido, as I say, is an art where they're fighting. I, I don't have loads of experience in Aikido, I'm, especially I don't have any formal training. But I know that it's like it came from the art of the sword, like back in the samurai days when they had the sword, like the katana sword, like the samurai days. So it was like without the sword, fighting without the sword, but you're able to fight directly and be able to make circular movements and step into utilize different techniques such as locks and self-defensive tactics. Anyway, yeah, so going back to that, so Bagua though is very circular, there's a lot of circular stepping. I like most martial arts, I mean, a lot of martial arts, I mean, you've got different distances you've got to range yourself, right? Far longer distance and closer distance. Wing Chun's one of the best for close quarters combat, but then again, all martial arts, you've got to think about it. If you're boxing or whatever, you're close up, you're going to have close range, you're going to be in close range, right, for the training anyway. Now, Bagua is a very fancy art to look at, and there are various different styles of Bagua, actually, too, but uh, I don't know much about that. But I was only able to learn the basics, like basic stance work um, and certain turning and things like that. Um, what got me interested in Bagua, because I'd never heard of it before, I'd never heard of it. I may have seen it without knowing it, but... Uh, I know there's like movies about it and certain things and videos. I've probably heard of it from like videos I've seen in the past of old kung fu movies or old documentaries, but I never actually took it really, really in and thought about it that much yet. And then yeah, and then whatever you know, the, you know the things. So the main, ba the real main basic thing was I was a massive fan. I've always been a fan of Jet Li growing up. I love all of his films. I could take you through all of the films right now of his. I really love these films and and Jackie Chan of course, but. 
there was one film which was kind of like a flop. It wasn't like that um, uh, liked by many people, but the ones who did like it liked it. And it was a film that I loved so much with Jet Li, and it's, um, uh, it was made in America. And in the film, he fights himself. And there's two Jet Lees in the movie, you know. And it's it's called The One. The movie's called The One. And in the movie, he actually uses the Bagua style to fight against himself. And the other one, the evil version of him, uses the Singy, like his Singy Tran. So um, basically, um, when he's fighting with the Bagua, I just found this art so fascinating to look at. Here we were seeing the traditional martial art in a more kind of modern film setting, but there was no bullshit messing around. This was the traditional martial art I was seeing. There was a lot of special effects and all this stuff. It's a similar thing. See, I like the Matrix and movies like that, but it's like I like the first Matrix best because it's mainly, you know, hand-to-hand, -hand, gritty. I like special effects, but I want to see the real martial arts skills when I see uh, you know the, the skills of people really doing it you know so it's yes yeah, flashy choreography but the arts there and the realities there and a lot of people don't you know um, know how real the traditional martial arts is especially in this day and age they just think it's all BS so looking into things I know myself what's real and what's not and looking in and I know you know I just know can't say how I just I just know from my experience and I know and it's like when I'm looking at this you're looking at someone who's a master you may think he's some actor or whatever Jet Li like a lot of these martial actors but the truth is you're looking at people that really know and they're carrying the knowledge and the skills of old ancient times of history past where there were true real hardcore masters so when you're seeing this stuff yeah done in a flashy way you're still seeing someone who knows their stuff and I was watched the movements and the flows of, of the way he was fighting with this thing, and I thought, you know what, I'd love to know something about the art. There's always been something about the Eastern martial arts just so amazing to me. It's like it's, it's effective for combat, but as a train, as a thing, the fluidity, the feeling of training, you know, it's, it's just those kind of art, the fluidity, the training, the hard, the soft, the power, the expression of the yin and yang is just a beautiful thing this is another reason why i give myself the name online as wushu richard many many years ago on my first ever channel and i've kept my name to that as such to this date wushu richard be it whatever channel i've used because i was just inspired i never knew what wushu was all i knew it was just, it was arts of kind of like, kind of branch or branches of kung fu that jet Li himself had learned you know, wushu being more like the flowy, flashy stuff you might see in the Olympics and stuff like that nowadays. But it's like wushu really just means martial arts. You know, it's like kung fu. So I just took the name. I thought I'll use that. You know, wushu Richard online, my name. And but you know, as I say, you know, so learning like some long fist, and then I'm learning some bagua. I knew a little bit about tai chi. I'd done some wing chun, some five animal kung fu, done kickboxing and karate weapons. I've been training stuff. All my life, it was just always great to know more. It's always good to know more about martial arts. When I first started training, what it was, we went to um, watch. He invited us, I think, to a martial arts. No, what it was, it, um, I went to a martial arts demonstration. Okay, and that, yeah. Uh, to do a demonstration, because I'd been doing a lot of demonstrations too. My teacher actually took me around and let me do demonstrations. Uh, with other people that were doing martial arts demonstrations. We'd go one by one. There were like competitions and stuff. And I'd do my wushu forms that I'd been learning and stuff like that. And it was great. I was very honoured. I was very honoured to be doing it. It was a really great, very honourable thing to be doing it. And um, basically, though, um, I was just a foreigner, yeah. But it was like I was, I was doing it and I love the martial arts. It was, part, it was good to be part of that. A family of as such. A martial arts family of people that are keeping Kung Fu alive. You've got these modern day stuff, MMA and stuff, but keeping Kung Fu alive, man, and karate, like original martial arts alive, yeah. Not just like, it's all bullshit, you know, like people say, it's, it is the real deal. Not living in some dream, but it's, it's real, you know. Some teachers are better than others, some stuff's more real than others, but you know, the truth is, traditional martial arts is great. And if you learn more about it and you look into it, you'll find out that uh, a lot more about it. So yeah, anyways, go back to what I was saying though. I was we went to one de one of the demos we went at was actually held inside rather than in a big open square like the previous one, and we went into this big sports like arena thing. I've still got footage of my demonstration on that day, yeah. And um, basically I did a couple of demos. I think I did one with like bare fists, bare hands, and one was with a sword. 
And when we was in there, okay, when I was there, um, there were other demonstrations, a lot of martial artists in there, people, you know, doing forms and stuff. You had Bagua, you had drunken boxing, Kung Fu, Tai Chi, lots of stuff. And a lot of people were like, uh, older aged, if not super, super old. Yeah, whatever, you know, yeah. Um, yeah, but, you know, yeah, there was um, a guy there. No, there was a, a woman, a younger lady, like in her 30s, I think she was. And the funny thing is, I'm in my 30s now. This is years and years later. And she was, um, I forgot what her name is now. I think it was Sun Jing or something. I forgot her name, but she was fantastic. And she was flowing and she was doing a form and it was Bagua. And I'd never seen it actually in real life with my own eyes before. I was straight away, there was something about that. And I knew that looks like what I saw in the Jet Li movie, man. I was like, what's fucking cool? You know, it's in my language. And I thought, this looks cool. And I thought, I want to know about that. There's people here doing that because you've got these older people around doing Tai Chi and that. And it was like, even just like simplified versions. But you've got this woman here busting it. You've got fast movement, slow movement, jumping kicks and just spinning and that. Coiling and the way it is, it's like, it's beautiful art to watch. Very beautiful. But it was like... This is combat, you know, it's fucking combat. I thought, this is it, man. And anyway, the, the people I was with at the time, someone went over and they found out who her teacher was. It was from her, you know, that I learned, that I, um, it was. And she actually showed me a couple of moves later on too, but she was one of his students, my Bagua teacher's students. And they trained in hot sun and they trained in the snow as well. They were hardcore. They used to train in all weathers with thick clothes on in the winter time in the parks and stuff. And it was just such a amazing thing. You call it a cult. I don't know. It's like it's a family, a kung fu family sort of thing. You know, and when you're in a part of a kung fu group or a martial arts group like that, a family, it's a beautiful feeling. And they're like they stuck together with their teacher and trained. And you know the guy accepted me as a student but he wanted to put me through the tests first so when I went there he knew that I had some previous knowledge in martial arts and stuff and kung fu in China but um, yeah he basically just had me stand in front of the tree and I was standing there in this fucking position uh, he got me stretching and stuff too but I always used to work out before I went out anyway before I went out to learn any of these martial arts we'd sometimes have to run to get to the places or walk very far but the thing was, I was, um, as I say, um, he would get me standing in front of this tree and just standing there holding the position and like, oh, here we are again, burning the root. And it brought back memories of when I was learning the five animal kung fu back in England. Because here I was learning kung fu, as in standing in a rooted position, holding the position, sweating and burning it out, then turning the other way and gradually it had me walk around and over time he started to teach me one move here one move there and it was like hard it was the real deal but having that background of like training so much martial arts I knew the kind of discipline I would need and I was more ready and I've been working out anyway and working out at home and stuff it was a really amazing experience the only reason I stopped learning Bagua really was because I work at the time and things and I just couldn't get there on time to the parks it was too far but I continued training everything by myself that I learned from these both of these wushu type kung fu teachers. And I trained in all weathers by myself. In the next video, we'll talk more about my solo training. Okay, In the next video, I will talk to you about my own solo training by myself in terms of me living in China, training martial arts by myself. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.